Welcome to Steve Reads Bible Stories. Reverend Steve Janes reads Bible stories while pointing out keys and principles on how to read the Bible. Hi, God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Steve Janes, and this is the More Abundant Life Podcast. This week we're going to listen to episode number 338, Be Strong in Service. Take your Bibles and go to Deuteronomy chapter 34. It's the very last book in Deuteronomy. I'm really going to look at Judges this morning, but I want to finish off in Deuteronomy (coughs) chapter 34 in verse 1. I'm calling this teaching, Be Strong. Be Strong. It says in chapter 34, in verse 1, it says, And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo, to the top of, the, of Pisgath, that is, over against Jordan. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan, and all Nathia, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah, unto the uppermost sea, and the south, and the plains of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, unto Zorah. So the, God took Moses to the top of the mountain and showed him all this wonderful land. And in verse 4, And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I sweared unto Abraham, and unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed, and I have caused thee to see it with thine thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over hither. So God says, there it is, and this is the promise that I made to Abraham. I made the promise also to Isaac and to Jacob, and there it is, and you can see it, but you're not going over hither. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of God, or the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor, but no man knew, knoweth, of his sepulcher unto this day. He was buried, but there's no stone, no marker. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were not dimmed, nor his natural forces abated. Now, I always love this verse, because he lived to be 120 years old. He says his eyes didn't go dim, and he didn't lose any of his natural forces forces. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plain of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses has laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, did as the Lord commanded Moses. And I just want to point out, see, Joshua was was filled of the spirit of wisdom. And he said he got this by the laying of the hands of Moses, which is pretty neat. See, uh, we've we've learned and looked in other teachings that it's Christ in us. It's God in Christ in us. And we're to lay hands on the sick and they're to recover. There's a transference of something happening by the laying on of hands. And you know something? Where science has really proven this transferal by touching. I mean, I'll tell you how they're doing it, by DNA. Scientists now can walk into a crime and they know where you've been, just by, you, by where you touched. Can you imagine having Christ in you, in every part of your body, right? It's Christ behind your eyes, Christ behind your hands, Christ in every cell of your body, and you touch somebody, what are you doing? 
Spirit, Christ, is touching them. There's a transference going there. And that's what happened here. So I just find that very interesting. Because Moses had laid his hands on him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And then it says, And there arose not a prophet sent in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. And I think this is a wonderful thing. It says that Moses knew the Lord face to face. Wouldn't you like to know the Lord face to face? Well, I think you can, because you we got spirit too. And all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land and in all that mighty hand and in all that great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. He really, Moses really walked with God. And I thought we ought to read the final verses about Moses so we can know how this must have felt to a man named Joshua. Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. You know, after 30 days of mourning, after such a great leader as Moses that we just read about, all the things, all the signs and miracles he did unto Pharaoh, all that he did, when he was gone, the children of Israel were left without this very charismatic leader, Moses. Not just charismatic, but one who walked and did many signs and wonders. That's what Moses did. So the Lord here is saying he's dead. He's dead. I, I think I want to point out at this time, this was the pattern in the Old Testament where they had great leaders, great charismatic leaders that uh, men and women followed. And today, in, uh, when we're born again, we got Holy Spirit, sometimes people are looking for this person, another Moses or another Joshua. Well, it doesn't say that's what we do now. Now we all have Christ in us. There is no hierarchy like the Old Testament. It's a completely different pattern when it comes to that. We're not looking for the new Moses or the new Joshua. We got the Word of God. We got the Bible that we can use to help people understand who God is and stuff. And that there are you know, gift ministries, there are people, but those people are there to serve us and help us. So it's a little different pattern, but we're looking at the pattern in the Old Testament, and he's saying here, Moses, my servant, is dead. And the point God is making, hey, he's not coming back. He's not coming through those doors to help us. Joshua, it's up to you now. You see that? He's really making an emphasis. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan. Now God is saying, hey, get up and get going. Moses is dead. Time for you to move. Go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which, which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the soles of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given you. As I said unto Moses, everywhere you walk, that's yours. From the wilderness of this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. You know, you can read similar things that are written directly to us in the, in the church epistles. To us, we are more than conquerors, super conquerors. 
God will not leave us nor forsake us either. That's what we should take out of this. And verse 6 says, Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou what? Strong and very courageous. I'm saying to all you in this room and all that are listening to this teaching, be strong and be very courageous. I can show you similar words to these in the church epistles, and I might. That thou mightest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand nor to the left, that thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou goest. Do you want to prosper wherever you go? Well, don't turn to the left or the right. Stay on that wonderful word. The importance to us in this administration is that we can continue to work the word, to read the word, to make sure that we're standing on the word. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Hey, today we still have to make sure that we're doing the Word. And the only way to make sure you're doing the Word is to read it, to look at it, to see what it says, right? To see, oh yeah, this is what I am still doing the Word. Or I can get back to doing the Word, whatever it takes. Then thou shalt have what kind of success? Good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Hey, to, with us today in this administration, God isn't with us anymore. You know where he is? He's in us. He's part of us. He makes his habitation with us. And when we put our hands out to touch people, God's hand goes out and touches them. That's pretty neat to think about. Verse 10 says, well, I want to, like, in my note, I ought to put this. God sent him to go do this. He's also sent us. Verse 10. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you vittles. That's another way of saying, Get the grub ready. For within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. They're not waiting very long. He's saying, Get ready. In three days we're moving. That would be like saying, On Wednesday we're heading out. And to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to half the tribe of Manasseh, spake Joshua, saying, Remember the words which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest, and hath given you this land. God promised them the land. He promised it to Abraham years before. And he's saying, hey, remember, he hath given, it's past tense. You know what? They haven't uh, even got there yet. They're just looking at it. But he's saying, remember, God hath already given you the land and the rest. So go get it. It's already yours. It reminds me a little bit about going and getting your healing, going and getting your prosperity, going and getting what God has promised you. He's already given it to you. Now go get it. Then verse 14 says, Your wives and your little ones and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of the Jordan. They're, your wives and your children and your cattle, they're going to stay on this side of the river. Moses gave you that land too. But ye shall pass before your brethren armed all the mighty men of valor and help them and to the Lord until the Lord had given your brethren rest 
as he hath given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God had given them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side of Jordan towards the sun rising. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us, we will do. We're going to do it. Yay, let's go. And whither so thou sendest us, we're going to go. You tell us where to go, we're going to do it. According as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. They, except they didn't really listen to Moses. <laughs> yeah, but. I would be too happy about that. <laughs> Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. It says, Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment and will not hearken unto thy words and all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. And from here, they, if you can read the book of... Uh, Joshua are on your own, but from here, they go and possess the land. It's a nice little record to read, and it's only 24 cha chapters, so I suggest that so if you haven't read it yet, you ought to read it. It's pretty cool. But I wanted to go to Joshua 24, the very last chapter of Joshua, and just read the end of it. The children of Israel were very quick to say, yeah, we'll do it were very quick. The children of Israel were very quick to say we'll do it, but they were very a little slow on actually doing it. And the same thing happened with Joshua. They sent in the, you know, the ten spies and you know, and they came back and they go, Oh no, don't go. Don't go. But they Joshua said, No, we're going. God gave it to us. They saw the land, they saw the people in the land, they said, they're like giants, they'll kill us. We can't go in. They, they acted like Barney Fife, <laughs> you know, and so they didn't go in, you know. No, they did. Joshua made sure they went in. He said, let's go. Let's move it. And I want to go to start in verse 14. And he finally gets them to where they're supposed to be. They didn't go. They went in kicking and screaming. And, uh, you know, that's the way they went in. And in verse 14, he says, now, therefore, fear the Lord. He's, they're in there. They're, they've got the land. He says, now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. This flood is not the flood of Moses. This is the flood when the Red Sea came back and washed all the chariots clean. You know, and he's saying... Put away those other gods in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods of your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye, ye dwell. They're living there now. And you know what? They like their gods too. They like everyone's God. That's the problem they, they had. But as, but as for me and my house, we serve the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. That's what we're going to do. In the world today, just like then, there's many things you can serve. You can serve money. You can serve your community. You can serve the environment. You can serve... Uh, skiing, you can serve tennis, golf, you know, you can be the best runner. You can uh, be a motocross star or, you know, you can serve all kinds of things, right? Or you can serve God and still do those other things a little bit. Right. You just don't serve it. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord and go out and serve other gods. Gods, For the Lord our God is, is he that is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt and from the house of bondage and which did 
those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed and the Lord drave out from before us all the people even the Amorites which dwelt in the land therefore we will we also serve the Lord for he is our God they're making a declaration that they're gonna do it and Joshua said unto the people ye cannot serve the Lord for he is a holy God he is a jealous God he will not forgive your transgression nor your sins he, he, he's saying if you don't follow him in the Old Testament he was a jealous God he didn't like it if you you called him God and you went and got another one he didn't like it you know and you're and he says you will not forgive your transgression nor your sins if you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he hath after that he hath done you good and this is was the record of the children of Israel the children of Israel would cry for help oh we're in bad shape help us God God would help them they would get blessed for a while then they'd go you know we're pretty cool our, on, in our own right I don't, you know I think we did it ourselves I don't think it was God that did it then they would go and get hurt and be in hurt and then they'd cry out for God God would help them and they just follow that entire pattern right up until Jesus Christ if you read the Old Testament and you can see there's times where they were actually the put into bondage the the Persian well the Babylonian Empire captured all of the children of Israel and took them to Babylonia and then the Persian Empire overtook the Babylonian Empire and why did this all happen because the children of Israel went at the strange gods they stopped worshiping God it happened it's just a great pattern that we could should learn from by reading those records no child of God should be in captivity but they were they shouldn't do that I want to keep reading here a little bit where am I sir 21. 21 it says and the people said unto Joshua nay we will serve the Lord and Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses, you're right. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and he set them a statue and an ordinance in Shittim. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak, that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. They put, he put a big rock there underneath the oak, and he says, he's going to say this, And the Lord said unto the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us, for it hath heard all the words the Lord of the Lord, which he spake unto us, and it shall be, be therefore a witness unto you, lest ye deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart, every man, unto his inheritance. And they all went back. And that's where I want to close the teaching right there. He, had, he made the people say, yeah, we're going to serve you, God. We're going to do it. Because we know the records. The books, of, the books that follows is Judges, when they had the different Judges. And boy, they, didn't, they would stand a little bit, but not too much. You know, back and forth, then the kings and all this stuff. All right, you want to see where it says, uh, be strong and being of good courage in the church epistles? Go to Ephesians chapter 6. 
See, everything that was written, you know, in the Old Testament was written for our learning. It's not written directly to us. But there's learning there for us. There's application that we can use in, in the here and now. But what I'm going to read now from Ephesians is direct, written directly to us. In verse 10 it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil or the methods of the devil. There is a devil that's trying to steal, kill, and destroy, but we know how to stand against him. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. See, God's word has asked us to take the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God is everything that we have spiritually and everything that we have in God's word. We're to put on that word into our minds and use what we have spiritually. The whole armor of God that we may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand. Therefore, having your loins girt about truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith, or believing. Believing's the shield, wherein ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Believing. The shield, you know, stands before, in front of you. The fiery darts say, you're no good. You suck, you know. You'll never amount to anything. Poor is where you should be. The, Jesus Christ said they'll always, the poor will always be among us, and that's you. Those are fiery darts. We take the shield, the fiery dart hits the shield, falls to the ground. Hits the shield, falls to the ground. Pretty wild, huh? And then it says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The Word of God. This is how you fight back. It is written. <sighs> this is my sword. Does it look cool? <laughs> but that's what it is. It's a sword of the Spirit. Whenever we're attacked, whenever we're, we, we're, something goes on where we need to line up the Word, we put the Word on. We speak the Word and we thank the word, the word is the sword of the spirit and it protects our brain cells. And then verse 18 is where I'm going to close. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So we're, we like to pray. That's part of putting on the whole armor of God is praying, using the shield of belief. We are a listener-supported podcast. I want to thank those who generously give so that we can keep the podcast available. The podcast is heard around the world for all those who would want to know how to accurately understand the Bible when they read. The episode is complete, so head over to stevejanes.com. While there, sign up for our newsletter. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on How to Read the Bible for Understanding and Power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless Word.